Hello, I'm Ricky. And I'm Joe. And this is Season 4, Episode 6 of the Beer and Broadband Podcast. Uh, it's slated to come out on June 28th, 2021. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about some more brews that I did <laughs> over the break and, and since last year. Uh, but we're going to do a one-year tasting of the sizer that I did last year, uh, which Ricky's uh, the one that Ricky said is off in our in our in the podcast that we did. Uh, but I was like, man, you know, th- this I really enjoyed this one, and mm-hmm. you know, felt terrible about it. We're also going to do a brew that I did on Accident Brewer called the Midnight Run, which is a spiced pie mint, um, and we're just going to kick it off. So let's talk about the sizer. Okay. Yeah. So full disclosure, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was just my bottle that something happens to. Cause, uh, it, I think as I said on the podcast, it, it had a flavor that I don't think you can just get like naturally in sense of like all flavors. I think just something went wrong there. Um, this other bottle, this is the one that's not aged nowhere. Does it have those same flavors? So that's just more reinforcement. I think there was just something with my bottle. Um, but overall I like how much this is mellow. It is really smooth. I'm not 100% sure I like the flavor profile, mm-hmm. but it is certainly aged really nice. I mean, it's a cold mead. It's, I'm remembering this correctly. This is a mead, right? We've <laughs> put a lot of podcasts. Yeah, si- Sizer. So Sizer, it's, yeah. It's, it's mead, an mead and juice. It is an oat, apple, um, spiced mixture that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, is, is also mead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it really does get the best of both worlds there. Cause it, there's not really a part unless you have really high alcohol content or reason to age cider for a really long time, unless you want it to have like the flavors of a barrel. Like you don't, it doesn't have a harshness you really need to let sit, but me certainly does. Um, and this mixture with like a one year over it is, it is like as smooth as water. There's almost no bite to it. Yeah, so it's a uh, apple juice, two pounds of wildflower. It's a two gallon brew. Mm. It was apple juice, two gallon, uh, uh Two pounds of wildflower honey, um, two containers of apple juice concentrate, raisins, a cup of light brown sugar in primary, and uh, added some light oak spirals into secondary. Um, the uh, that we use safe cider um, yeast in it, and uh, it was twelve uh, percent ABV or like eleven point eight percent ABV. Um, I agree. There are some things about it that I don't like. I, I need to do this one again. This is something I'm going I'm to make over the summer. I'm going to make some more ciders, um, but I, I want to make an apple wine again, essentially, a, mm-hmm. or a sizer because that's the the mead version of it. the The thing is, a year later, just smelling it, it smells like apple pie to me because mm-hmm. it's got that. It does have a really nice room. That that kind of cinnamon and apple flake uh smell to it and i'm not sure that that keeping it cold was the right call i uh, because i i tried it cold last time i thought mm-hmm. oh this will bring out some more of the the um the oils and stuff like that um the it's golden and beautiful in color uh, but it just it's a little bit cold it's a little bit watery it's not quite as flavorful as it was last time okay um, last time it had more of like the malolactic fermentation of course hadn't happened yet but it um it had a little bit more like bright notes from the apple and then the oaking really like gave it some um some of those wood sugars mm-hmm. to it because uh, it's a dry brew i mean it's a one dot, yep, yep. this 0.99 i think is what it went down to yeah, and it tastes really well for that um, that dryness. You know, I, it it doesn't have the kind of drying effect on the mouth because of how well it's aged. You know, it really does. It's it's a little bit drier than water, which I know is maybe hard to imagine, but it's so smooth. It doesn't leave anything behind. You know, it's a pleasant little sipping thing. Um, the primary flavor just 
isn't quite there for me. But in terms of like craft, like how well did this age? It's aged really nicely. I, th- I think we should let it warm up a little bit and then come back to it at the end of the podcast okay. and taste it again because mine, I, I held my hand to it for a few seconds mm-hmm. and let it, let it warm up a little bit and I got a little bit more of the apple notes and things like that that are in it. So we should come back to that one. Let's, okay. let's talk about the, uh, the Midnight Run, which is a red mead. I mean, mm-hmm. it is ruby red um, if you look at the color of it uh, in the window. Um, yeah, definitely it, spiced has oh, clove yeah. and and cinnamon and thing. so i put star anise mm-hmm. star anise clove and cinnamon in this along with some cardamom some black pepper and a couple other things like that. yeah you can taste all of it still love this one yeah um it is maybe my favorite thing that you make it really really reminds me of you know those like homemade ciders where you throw all the spices and you let it heat up in the slow cooker. In the mold. So it'll, yeah, yep. it'll, it'll just eat all that stuff up. That That's exactly what I was going to. This is supposed mm-hmm. to be a winter wine for the most part. Now, the difference between the first one that you tried and this one is that I used uh, the winemaker's grape juice concentrate for this one. Okay. Versus Welch's grape juice. Yeah, yeah. One. Just thinking back on the flavors... Is there? Can you taste a difference between the two, or do you remember a difference? Because I, I, I know, I know yeah, the difference. I, I can certainly remember a difference, and I, rem- I, we've been done four episodes now. This is aged or not aged? Um, it's uh, not that aged. It's okay, like three gotcha. Months old. Then it, that could be then, yeah, especially three months. A lot of um, what I was attributing to thinking, oh, this had aged for a long time like the other one, is just maybe the better quality juice. It is much smoother. It's The flavors are mixed in a lot better. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the even the fruit itself, like, it's got, like, those grape apple notes. But I, I'd struggle to be like, boom, that is 100% black grape. There's no apple. There's no apple in this. I know, but, like... When, when you brew something with one fruit, you get like flavors of a lot of other oh, fruits gotcha, that are similar. Gotcha. Yeah. So like not necessarily apple, but it's those like fall fruits yeah, yeah. that you get with it. The, um, the grape, the, the um, apple, the pear, the things like mm-hmm. that, that you might pull out some of those yeah. uh, kind of unctuous flavors. That exactly. You know, whereas when you make something generally with like a Welch's grape juice, it it's not bad. I've done it plenty of times, but those are really concentrated, really dark grapes that you don't get as much of that brightness that it could be something else. When you t- do something with Welch's grape juice, like that is 100% grape juice. You don't get the, well, this could be a mixture of fall fruits. You know. So that is my next experiment to do on the Accidental Brewer. Um, and, and of course, it'll lead mm-hmm. up to this podcast. Is I want to see if that, because uh, I have a box of it over there, mm-hmm. that white box, if that actually makes a difference in this or if it was the technique, because I also used some of those things that I've been learning about, like where you can use a fining powder and you can mm-hmm. use uh, some sorbates to be able to stop the fermentation of the yep. yeast and things like that. I mean, this isn't back sweetened at all. This is a completely dry wine and it does not taste like it's dry. No, it really doesn't. Yeah, it, it is my right now. It is my crowning achievement of, like the wines that I've made, like this and the ginger beer that I make are just mm-hmm. like mm, so good. I think it's for me. I'm so proud of this one. Yeah. This one, I'm like I, every time I drink it, I'm like, oh my god, this is so is amazing. What's the <laughs> um? What's the final gravity of this? Do you remember? Uh, it is uh, twelve percent ABV, I believe. Let me uh, double check. So these are almost. This is why I wanted to do them because they're mm-hmm. almost the same ABV. Yeah. Um, but let me just make sure that I am correct about that. So to find it, PyMint V2 used EC118, started at 1.11. Okay. Uh, went down to 1.02. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. And it is 12% ABV. They're almost the exact same. It's like 11.8% ABV. Yeah, yeah, okay. That, yeah, that makes sense to me. Well, normally when I hear like it has gone dry, I'm I'm thinking it's now in I, that like point nine nine sort I, of range. I said I said dry. I was wrong. Um, this one is not dry. The sizer is dry. 
yeah. this one is this one is a sweet Sweet. Yeah, it's still. I mean, point oh two is like that's a, that's not even a full sweet. That's like a semi sweet, and it carries itself really well because yeah. all those good spices in it. It feels like it's sweeter. It has a perceived sweetness that feels like it's sweeter than it really does. Thing. Yeah, and a lot of that is probably the spices, especially the pepper, because like pepper brings out a lot of those things, mm-hmm. brighten stuff up. Yeah, it does. Um, and the cardamom. So I probably don't need to use pepper in it if I'm using cardamom. I found that out. Like mm-hmm. cardamom can have the same effect yeah. as pepper. Um, so I'm. I'm probably going to start substituting one for the other, mm-hmm. but the spices blend just so well with this. I'm going to try some other spice blends and stuff like that. Now, what I think I'm going to do is make a five or six gallon batch of this pie mint, mm-hmm. just base. And then I'm going to try different spices on it and different techniques to like get it to this point and see what ends up happening. Yeah. And I'll make, well, I'll probably end up being a 12 gallon batch because I'll make, one with um, the um, the uh, Welch's grape juice, and one with the um, wine, yeah, the red yeah, wine yeah. concentrate. And I, I've made some of the red wine concentrate just as wine, mm-hmm. and it's really good just as red oh, yeah. wine. It's fantastic. Oh, yeah. um, those, those concentrate companies put a lot of time and effort into getting a good, just like one and done. Yeah, thing. yeah. It's I mean, for twenty bucks for mm-hmm. a gallon. It's not really cheaper necessarily than buying like a five dollar, you know, per bottle wine, mm-hmm. but you get such a better quality of product. Yeah, you do. Product. So, um, I, I mean, I, it's it's to the point that I'm almost um, ready to start like buying bourbon bourbon barrels and like making like getting those like two or three gallon bourbon barrels mm-hmm. and like putting wine into yeah. it to you know See what bring happens. some of that stuff out. Yeah, mm-hmm. and storing it for like a year or so out in my garage so it'll get hot and cold and hot and cold and mm-hmm. stuff like that yeah let's see see what ends up happening with it um uh, so that might be a thing that i do in the future i mean those are a little bit expensive for me to do right now but you know maybe yeah maybe I mean, once I'm you like, get a couple of things you really like it becomes it's a better investment on your part yeah well i i'm, I'm fine with adding chips and mm-hmm. and wood right now so that's that is another thing I, I need to test too. Is what happens if I oak this? Yeah, because oaking can really change the. I mean, it does, but as we saw from the last time we did that experiment, it takes a while. Yeah, to really get that fl- those flavors in. So it's like something you want to commit to. It does on larger batches, especially on smaller batches. Mm-hmm. You can get the oak in or the rum chips or something like that if you um, are able to get. So wh- one of the things I learned, you have to like change the temperature. Mm-hmm. of the thing to make the liquid go in and out yeah um i said the thing i meant the uh, the barrel the barrel yeah so. i was just thinking back to we when we did that barrel experiment like two three years ago yeah i think we left it in for what three or four months and there was like a little bit of flavor but not that much yeah it did it didn't work out really well but i also left it on my cat on my counter mm-hmm. i didn't let the temperature change for it very much so i didn't like intentionally like put it in a place where it would mm-hmm. seep and come in and out so i'm gonna try that again uh, knowing more of what I know now, um, but let's uh, let's talk about um, our topics for the day. Let's talk about AVA Direct. I know you bought a couple of computers from them, and I just recently bought one. And so far, I've had a good experience, but it's taken a while for my computer to like be put together. Yeah, some of it's because I bought a card, I bought a graphics card, which is hard to get right now. Um, that is not in, not going to be in stock for a long time. Uh, mm-hmm. versus like a uh, an in-stock graphics card like in the next like you know couple of months or so so tell me a little bit about your experience with them for the podcast they're not sponsoring us at all yeah, yeah. they're 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 a pretty good computer manufacturer um, I guess they're not really a manufacturer they're just they just assemble parts they don't yeah. make anything themselves um, they've made I think my last three computers and they've always been pretty good to me. Uh, it does take a little while for them to get everything put together and shipped because essentially they're not like a big warehouse. They have a couple physical stores, yeah. and everything you order online goes through one of the physical stores. Uh, but they burn everything in. They do a good job with cabling, and they don't jack up the price of parts very much. Yeah, so it was just a few dollars more than like you know, the retail. Cost. Exactly. Yeah. So you know, especially if you want something that's kind of a little hard to find right now. They don't super jack up the price to take advantage of that. You know, they, they get their parts from the manufacturer and only charge you a little bit more and then, you know, whatever service fees are in there. 
Um, so I, I've been real happy with every computer I've got with them. Yeah. I, this will be my first time getting it, and I called them up after I found out. They, they sent me an email saying um, after about a month that mm. the part wasn't in stock. And then I called them up, and I said, hey, you know, do I need to, like, replace the part or whatever? They gave me a recommendation on which part would be the best one to replace it with. Um, when I said, yeah, sure, go ahead and do that, they said, okay, we'll call you back. The only complaint that I have is that there's two complaints. One, they don't have their system set up so that it announces, like, on their caller ID that it's AVA Direct that's calling you, which I think that they should correct mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And then the second one is it would have been better if at, in the moment where I said I wanted to modify things, they mm -hmm. just went ahead and let me go through the billing process. Yeah. Um, I understand with a small store that may be difficult. So those are small gripes. They're not huge gripes. But those are two things that I would say these things could be corrected and it would mm -hmm. make it just like the ultimate customer experience like situation yeah that's true they definitely have that like small to medium sized shop sort of feel to them like every time you order something a person reviews it which on one hand is a good and a bad thing i know the first computer i got with them when i wasn't as familiar about computers the guy came in and said hey look um one of the things you selected is you wanted one of the quiet desktops but you've selected some fans that person i don't think are very quiet so if we build it exactly how you have it, I think it's going to end up being pretty loud. Uh, he was able to direct me to like some Nautica fans that he was right. I mean, once I got it, that thing was silent. Um, so, you know, there's, there's definitely good and bad to it, but it would be nice, especially like inventory wise. If instead of there's being a small disclaimer, this part may or may not be out of stock. They just say right away, we don't have this right now. We expect, you know, wait time of three or four weeks or something like that, yeah. you know? I, I think that they are worth going through oh, yeah. versus like a reseller like Main Gear or something like that. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, look, if you want a big time retailer, that's great. They've been around long enough that I I feel like they're not going anywhere. Yeah. Um, they're not a big time re retailer, and it feels a little bit more mom and pop mm -hmm. when I've when I've talked to them. Now the the support staff that they've used, um, I don't know if they're local. To, to the, I think they're in Ohio is where they're yeah. based out of. I don't know if they're local to them or not, but um, it seemed like they were using like some sort of um, like call center that specializes in. Yeah, you know, like, I, like, like yeah, I, I believe their like FAQ team and their chat team are not local. Just I, from I called them though. Okay. Yeah, and the, I, I think that may be not local also. Maybe yeah. Uh, the what the only support I've ever needed from them. Um, I engaged through like their little email system and the guy that got back to me, um, was in that Ohio shop. So I don't know if maybe you have to like handle call volume and stuff. They're routing it. And if you get like a higher tier of support, it goes to the local guys or who knows. But the, the only time I've ever had like an actual issue because my second computer, I had some problems, um, getting it to turn on cause some stuff had disconnected mm -hmm. in, uh, in shipping. And he like walked me through like, Send me pictures of like what needed to be connected where. That's pretty um, awesome. Yeah, and he he was local. He was the same guy that did the uh, the build review of my machine. As a person who has done pretty extensive customer service stuff for internal like customer service at the company I work for, having that level of detail is pretty awesome. Yeah. So. Um, one thing that I noticed today, and I didn't call that out in the last podcast, you were wearing a Google Fiber shirt. Oh yeah, it's my comfy T-shirt. <laughs> um, so let's let's go back to the. I, I mean, do you have anything else to say about AVA? Because I, no. I I recommend them. I think they're great. Mm. Um, I'm I'm looking forward to get my computer. I am sad that I didn't get it for for my vacation that I'm on right now, but um, I'll get it when it comes. Like I'll get it later. Um, so let let's revisit this sizer again. Because um, I've been letting it warm up a little bit. I've put my hand on it, mm -hmm. you know, kind of warmed it up a little bit. It's still a little cold, but just smelling it. Yeah, it's certainly a lot more aromatic now that it's heated up a little bit. Yeah, the, the caramel notes that are coming from the wood um, in mine, I don't know, can you smell that in yours? Because I, I know you weren't doing I'm something. not sure I'd place it Here. caramel, but there's definitely Sniff some not. darkness to it. Yeah, our, our smell the same. Yours no. may be a little bit lighter. Mm. I can smell the caramel notes that mm. um, that that 
the wood would give to it. Yeah. I'll say tasting it again, it did get a little bit brighter, but I'm still, I'm still struggling with that primary flavor. It's, it's so mild. It's really all just secondary tertiary flavor to me. Yeah. So you kind of get this feeling that you're like drinking. Oh, actually maybe that's a better way to put it. Uh, if you ever had those like fruit infusers for like a water bottle oh, where yeah. you'll put like a couple strawberries in, you throw it in. It, it's like that. If you didn't put enough fruit into it. it, it absolutely needs more apple flavor. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I'm not disagreeing with that at all. I just find it fascinating that just a little bit of time letting it warm up, like really changed. Oh yeah. Wines. Yeah. That's why so many wines, when you buy them, they'll say on the back, um, chill, don't refrigerate. Yeah. It's because while the flavor profile will change a little bit, the aroma completely changes. I, well, I, I didn't, li- I mean, this was only in the freezer, the f- freezer, the, f- the refrigerator for like 25 minutes before mm-hmm. I pulled it back out. Uh, I guess it was longer than that. I guess it was about 45. So yeah. I, I probably should have only let it be in there for 25. I tried to chill it. Mm-hmm. Um, I should have put it in, uh, um, in one of my ice things. I just don't have good ice right now. Uh, but yeah. So anyways, I think it's a good experiment. Definitely not my proudest moment. Still the midnight run. run Oh yeah. But still, I mean, this is, you made this when you'd only been brewing by yourself. Like seriously. For for like six months. Yeah. This was one of the first brews. Exactly. You know, and having drank so much of your stuff today, because we did a couple episodes together, there's such an improvement. Like everything else I've had today I will, I can very wholeheartedly say was good and I would drink again, you know, and it takes a while to get to that point, Mm -hmm. but you've gotten there, you know, so you don't got to look back at the, the older brews and be like, man, those weren't so great because the stuff you're making now is awesome. But I also think that this is a huge improvement from the first time I drank it. So like the first time Mm -hmm. I drank it, it was good, but it had some like notes that weren't perfect. And like, I I was excited about it because I could see where it was going. Mm -hmm. I want to do this again, but better. Yeah, and I think I think my sizer rep- recipe plus this could equal awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so or my cider recipe, not sizer. So I th- I think the cider is probably about where I want it to be. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll come back to it. We'll make another batch. Maybe we'll make it together. Yeah, and, and we can we can do that now. It, yeah. Uh, so I think that's the end of our podcast uh, for today. Yeah. Um, so this has been. Oh, I forgot the episode. I think it's episode six. Um, You'll see it in the title. (laughs) This has been season four, episode six of the Beer and Broadband podcast. Thank you so much for listening. We've got social links down below. And uh, I'll even include the website link for ABA Direct in in the notes. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll catch you next time.